Radio One. Radio One. Nigel Harmon, James McAvoy, um, you've been in this room together for approximately, I'd say, eight minutes, and it's very obvious to me that you are genuinely lovely friends. In and love. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about bikes, showing each other, you know, the checkout mine, this is where I'm getting, all that kind of stuff. Yep. That must make for a brilliant working environment. It's really good. On stage, I always know that underneath the kind of the, the the vortex of of mania and bipolarism and and sort of uh, this unbreakable guilt, there is a subtext of motorbikes and the fact that, <laughs> that I know that <laughs> Nigel is wearing tights right now. He is. He's Not wearing in the tights play, as right we now. yeah as we speak. I'm actually getting a bit sweaty now because I'm. I, well, that's what ten. Are they man tights? They kind of like. Don't you know put your when socks you go, in my teeth. You know when you go. Yeah, put, don't take your trousers no, off, I won't, please. But you've got. Um, <laughs> the, this is my thermal top, but you're, they're climbers tights. Yeah. All right. But okay. Anyway, much this is the, the, <laughs> thank you both for for biking in today <laughs> okay. to do this interview yeah, um, and to bike. talk about loads of stuff, including your play, which I saw a week past Saturday and I absolutely loved it. Thank you. I saw um, saw you, James, the other night at the Empire yep. Film Awards, and I was just enthusing about it. I've tried to describe it. It's very hard to summarise in a in a little sort of sentence, but I'm I'm going to give it a go and go on, be gentle with me. Okay. Um, We've struggled, so please don't worry. Uh, okay, three days of rain. Uh, it's not the weather forecast for Glastonbury, uh, <laughs> but the name of the play that stars you, James McAvoy, and you, Nigel Harmon and Lindsay Marshall, a brother and sister are reunited for the reading of their father's will, along with the son of their father's partner. Whilst waiting, they discover their father's journal with the words three days of rain as the opener. Will it explain to them more about the man they feel they know so little of? How the actions and reactions of one generation are interpreted by the next? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Apart from the father's partner, it sounds like they were lovers, doesn't it? <laughs> it but, oh, I, okay. but every oh. now and Working again, partner? people... You can, well, yeah, there's a, but but there's a little bit in there. Yeah, 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 one yeah. bed in that part. Did you see? Yeah, did, yeah, I know. Did true. you see? The director said, "Yeah, but maybe the apartment just moves out into the audience, and we don't see it because obviously the audience yeah. are sitting there." To which I think every one of us just maintained silence and went. I don't mm. that. See, I assume there's a little bit of love there. I think. Oh, there's a a did you see the bit where I tried to put my tongue in his mouth? No, I missed that. It was only like a split second, but it was definitely the night you were in. It was because I knew he was wearing tights. I thought it's all, Can we you know. Leave the tights thing, man, but I think people are going to get the wrong idea. I don't know, man. I don't know. And then when you said they were climbing, I should have put tights, my fishnets. We're going out tights on. Oh, um. darling. <laughs> I like the kind of sheer thing that you've got going on. It's that kind of eighties vibe. They, what they do is they do hold me in, uh-huh. which is nice. So it keeps me nice and firm. Nice feeling of yeah. firmness. Yeah. It's um, it's back to the play and, yes. and not the tights. Um, three of you in this play, and mm-hmm. that's it basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it totally captures your attention, and there's there's a lot of words going on. There's speeches. There's kind of you know, barking at each other and, mm-hmm. and ex- explanations going on. With just three of you, is, is it a lot of responsibility? Is it harder than things yeah. that you've done in the past? I think it, I, there's three of us playing six parts, which in itself is a, is a lot to take on when you're first rehearsing because as soon as you get to the end of the first half, you realise you have to start again from the beginning for the second half for the mm. new person. But you know, because there's only three of you in it, you know that if, if, you, if you have an off night or you drop the ball in some way to use a actor expression, <laughs> drop the ball, yep. uh, then you know you're letting the other two down. So there's a pressure that, um, that, that there's just the three of you and you need to perform at your top level. But also you know that we all get on so well that it's a joy and we put each other in each other's hands and trust each other. And, and that is when it gets really exciting for me. And the quicker we go some nights, the you know you can see the audience going, wow, wow, this is going really fast. And, yeah. and that's kind of really exciting as a piece of theatre rather than constantly just, is everyone okay? And making it all sort yeah. of soft and tender. But and the, I, other, so the other thing I was going to say as well, a lot of shows you're going to see, you've got big cast, and maybe get 12 to 20 people in them or something like that. And it somehow decreases the stakes because if the first four people that come on stage aren't very good, it's all right because the next person coming on might be. And there's generally going to be half the cast are good. There's only three of us. <laughs> so if one of us isn't very good, that's a third of your night battered. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, so it increases the stakes. And I think when the stakes are higher, the rewards are greater. And, and I don't know, I think it just makes the whole night a bigger threat and yeah. um, hopefully a bigger payoff. What's the theatre experience like like for you on your side of things? Because as, a, as, a, you know, as someone coming to watch a play, I haven't done it for so long. It was such a nice experience. Um, for you in terms of the other work, you've done film work, TV work, all that kind of stuff. I know you've both done a lot of theatre, but is it completely different? Does it give you a, a different type of buzz, a di- different type of satisfaction? Is it? Yeah, totally. I yeah. think it does. It's... Yeah. Um, you know, I always think about film and television is about is about spending fourteen hours a day collaborating with like two hundred people or one hundred people uh, to capture like one second of truth. <laughs> Do you mm. know what I mean? Whereas theatre is about spending four or five months 
But actually just spending that two hours with 700 people in the audience and sharing that moment and it will never exist again. It's just that night and that's it. What is what you've done in films committed to memory forever and there's something just special about the things that you share in that room at that time because it's personal, yeah. I think, you know. And also at 7.30 when we, when we start, it's there is just three of us going on stage. Everything's in place and it's been really well directed, brilliant writing. We've got a great sound design, set design, everything like that. Everything's in place, but when we walk out there, it's ours, and it's mm. up to us whether we make it work or not. Mm. I mean, we have all the foundations in place, and we're working with some brilliant people, but at 7.30, it's just down to us, whereas, you know, you can give a great performance on telly or on film, and if it's edited in a, in a different way, or they may even cut it out because they don't think it suits the, the, the narrative or whatever, and it's out of your hands, I think, whereas what we do is very much in our hands, and also it's two hours non-stop, and if something goes wrong, you're on to the next thing. You can't yeah. sort of lament anything yeah. that's you know like if we do a gag that just falls flat in his face <laughs> which yes. normally makes us laugh yeah. the, the more quiet the reaction is the more we tend to giggle so or if you belch or if yeah. we belch who would ever do that on the <laughs> london's glittering <laughs> west end stage yeah. it's very wrong i was going to say though it's, well, it's like if you watch a film if you rent a dvd you're seeing the exact same product that millions of other people have seen maybe sometimes literally millions of people have seen yeah um and if you go to see a play and especially if you're going to see a good one you're, and certainly if you're going to see this one, I think, you're going to see something that you only share with the people in that room. Nobody else has seen that particular show, and I do think th this particular show lends itself to being different every single yeah, night. Yeah, we get a lot of that in the stage, though, don't we? A lot of people who've been four or five times, you know, wow, that's... who like to keep coming, are always commenting on how different it is yeah. and how much is changing, and, and which is great. I mean, But we still tell the same story, which is yeah. weird, but it's just a different execution of it, and I think that's really special. It's like a tailor-made show every night for that particular audience and how they react. And we've, yeah, we've got our things that we will always do. We've got a story that we will always endeavour to tell, mm. but there's something special for an audience that you're not going to get anywhere else, you know? I sound like I'm really trying to sell theatre for the British Tourist Board or something like that, but... Mm. Well, I was going to say that, because we were... I, I talked about... I'd, I'd been at the play uh, the, the day after and stuff, and, and it was amazing, the response of people who were like, I haven't been for ages, I really want to go, and people, you know, talked about all these different deals you can get for students and stuff on, yeah. online and things like that, and, you know, the more people go, the better, is, is kind yeah. of my thing. Um how do you remember the words? Mm. How do you remember your lines? Go on, Nige. Uh, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, we just, we kind of, you just pray really. Right now, because we've been doing it for about six weeks, is it? Yeah. But it's kind of in your subconscious, so you know that they're there. And McAvoy is the master, the master of making it up. He, <laughs> really? He did a whole speech <laughs> once about a place in Italy that didn't exist within the play. And Lindsay's face, who's our third basket, who's not here obviously today, she could see her going grey while he's just rambling on and he will not stop. And he's incredible. So um, I suppose you just learn them and you pray because it's going so quick. And also, I mean, I come on and do some very quick stuff when I come on and you can get away with a few sort of, what dare I say, cock ups and yeah. ad libs? Because the, you're going so quick, they go, "Did he really say that?" I mean, the other <laughs> night, I complete when we were arguing, I completely said the absolute opposite of my argument, but I did it so quickly, no one noticed. <laughs> 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 yeah, so lots the, of shouting. The answer to that question is, you don't. The answer is yes. Yeah. I'm still learning. I'm, yeah. Have you ever seen like a like a Mike Lee thing or something like that where you just make up your own lines, stuff like that? Actually, that's not even true. He doesn't. Um, I struggle with. I'm struggling with my lines this week anyway. I know that. Why? Obviously. Why this week? Because uh, I think Cause he's, he's coming. Uh, he comes in drunk every he's night. He's got a bike in his head. Yeah. New bike. I'm just new thinking bike. about bikes. And Peter O'Toole is <laughs> my my mentor, one up, and he one keeps down, getting five up. up. One down, five up. Mirror signal manoeuvre. <laughs> what do I have to speak now? When oh, have you? <laughs> you got your bike test. Uh, yeah. I got it very soon. Fingers Good crossed. Luck. Thank you so much. You I mean, mm. you're nervous yeah, it's about good it. to air this in the public. Uh, <laughs> am I nervous about it? Am I nervous about it? Yes, yes. I am nervous about it. I've done the um, the is it CBT? Yeah, I've done yeah, that yeah. one. That was fun. Yeah, it's all right actually. Oh, you know, I just that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you've not done the it's real a nice one. Day out. <laughs> <laughs> CBT, <laughs> bring all your friends. I never imagined a pair of you being like big bikers. No. I'm, I'm You're not that biker. hairy. Mm, that's true. <laughs> We're not. We're quite. And you don't really like list. cooking, do you? No. Lindsay and I go on about cooking nearly every day. <laughs> When we come into the theatre, it's like, all right, Nigel, hiya, Lindsay, how are you doing? What did you have your dinner last oh, night? Geez. Did you sleep well? That's kind of the conversation. Yeah. We're a really interesting bunch. Honestly, we get much <laughs> more dynamic when we step on stage. I yeah. mean it. Yeah.